Channel 4. The government has announced plans to privatise Channel 4, with Culture Secretary Nadine Dorries saying the current government ownership is holding the channel back. Channel 4 was launched in 1982 and despite being a government-owned broadcasting company, does not receive any public funding getting its money through advertisements. There have been suggestions that the channel could be worth between £600 million and £1.5 billion, and bids are expected to come in next year with aims of completing the sale in 2024. Well, joining us to discuss this story is President of Murray Edwards College at Cambridge and the former Head of News and Current Affairs at Channel 4, Dorothy Burn. Dorothy, thank you for joining us this morning. Um, first thank question, uh, uh, not at all. Well, first question, and it, it should in theory be a simple one. Do you think that this is the right move by the government? I don't think it's the right move because I think that the model that Margaret Thatcher and William Whitelaw put forward all those decades ago has been a great one for Britain. Uh, Channel 4 doesn't uh, uh, not only does it not cost us any money, but it doesn't make any of its own programs. They're all made by independent production companies. And that has brought to this country one of our most successful industries, the um, independent production television sector. The companies also retain all the copyright in their programs. And so they sell them all around the world and make lots of money. And I noticed in the Daily Mail today that um, Nadine Doris was saying that some of those companies have become very successful and are making lots of money. And I thought that was a very British attitude that we should start criticising people when they make lots of money. The whole point is that independent production companies based around Britain should make lots of money. And even the news, which people are looking at pictures of now, isn't made by Channel 4, it's made by an independent production company. Well, one of the lines <clears> from government there is that uh, it being sort of publicly owned is, is holding the channel back. Do you see any truth in that? I don't see truth in that, no. If the government thinks, and I'm not sure they're right here, <clears throat> excuse me, that um, Channel 4 needs to borrow more money in order uh, to flourish, um, the government is able to make the decision to allow it to do that. But I think it, that's based on a misconception. Nadine Doris has talked about Channel 4's need to compete with Netflix and Amazon. You know, uh, they would have to borrow a hell of a lot of money to compete with Netflix and Amazon, and I don't think we should be borrowing lots more money in this country myself. The job of Channel 4 isn't to compete with global players making swanky programs like Bridgerton. It's to make programs about this country made by people in this country from all the nations and regions of this country. And, you know, I've been very pleased to go regularly to Belfast in my time, for example, at Channel 4, to commission programmes, award-winning programmes from Belfast. Do we really think that some great big new owner is going to commission the small programmes from places like Belfast and Glasgow where Channel 4 commissions programmes now? It won't. It will want to make the programmes itself to keep the money for itself. Um, I, I was going to ask you about that, actually, because, of course, um, Derry Girls is one of the most successful uh, productions from Northern Ireland. And we've introduced everybody to the, the, the language and the culture of the northwest of Northern Ireland uh, from the 1980s and 1990s. Exactly. You know, <laughs> yeah. The most successful production ever from Northern Ireland, but because it was made from people from Northern Ireland. It wasn't just all about the troubles, mm. you know, the way that people always see Northern Ireland. People in a country see that programme, uh, uh, see that country in a very different way to the way some big global player would see it. I've been really pleased to produce programmes out of Glasgow, having been born in Paisley myself, that haven't been all about 
poverty and drugs in Paisley. You know, um, one of my most successful programs from Glasgow has been a network consumer program made by a marvelous small production company called Firecrest, which has flourished. And they would say them this themselves because Channel 4 supported them and helped them to get going. And that has been such an important part of what Channel 4 has done. It's had this remit to boost the independent production companies around Britain. And it, it, it has made companies rise up in cities where previously uh, they didn't exist. I had to come to live in London decades ago to promote my own career because there wasn't enough for me, <coughs> excuse me, um, up in Manchester where I worked at the time. And, I, you know, we have to stop that happening. Dorothy, would, would you accept that to a certain degree <coughs> this has been inevitable? I mean, I oppose the <coughs> of, of Channel 4, but the truth is, isn't it, that the Channel 4 has increasingly been taking a partisan line, particularly its news and editorial programmes over, over recent years. It's been seen as very anti-Brexit, almost like Guardian TV following the Liberal left line the whole time. And eventually people in government were going to say, look, enough, you're not following your remit, we're going to flog you off to the market. You know, I think that this is a red herring. Um, firstly, it is not the case that Channel 4 has had um, cases against it brought by a few right-wing people upheld to say that it is partisan. That is just a, a, a lie put out. I'm not saying you're a liar, but it is a lie put out. For example, it has done controversial things, um, and I've done some of them myself, um, but it, that does, being controversial doesn't make you partisan. I made a program with Kelvin McKenzie called How to Save the Tories. I never made a program called How to Save the Labour Party. Nobody um, on the right criticised me for being partisan at that point. I, I, I made a program criticising Nelson Mandela and saying he was a wonderful person, but actually he was not any good as a president. The BBC, ITV, they didn't make pro that programme. Peter Hitchens has made programmes for me. Um, one of them condemning David Cameron for being insufficiently right wing. Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favourite shows and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.